Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Overdosely. Kako say? Dobra. Molim. Okay. Okay. So we'll do one bhajan. It's uh, we know it as uh, Yaso Mati Nandana. Sometimes it's called Sri Nam. Kirtan. Um, can we? Oh, this thing is is not working, is it? No. I think it's it's got coronavirus or something. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not working. <laughs> Yaso Mati Nandana Bhaja Bharanagara Kukul Ranjana Khaanha Yaso Mati Nandana Bhaja Bharanagara Kukul Ranjan Ha 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 So Kukul Gobi Parananandanum Madhamano i 
Makancho, Makancho, one who steals butter. God is a thief. He steals your heart, and, and then you can't get it back. <laughs> That's a good thief, though, because if he steals your heart, then if you try to arrest him, <laughs> he takes everything after that, and. Instead of you, him getting in trouble, you get fined for trying to arrest the thief. <laughs> but he's a good thief. He likes to steal. How many of you like butter? Yeah, it's really good. You could just take butter and just like, mm, it's really like, you can just eat it like that. When we were first joined the Hare Krishna movement, I was, uh, my, my service was to churn butter because we were on the farm and we used to churn they would give me the milk and I would separate the cream from the milk and then turn the butter. And then we get these big yellow bright balls of butter and then we would mix them with pure sugar. 
and we'd offer them to the deities, and then nobody could find them after they offered them. <laughs> the bodies would steal them. <laughs> Just butter and sugar, honey, bow. So the title of this, uh, this uh, particular talk is How to Get the Sweet Taste. So there it is. <laughs> so Krishna, he likes to steal butter. His mother and father, Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yasoda, they're really concerned. First I should say, Om Gyan Timiranda Siragyana Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. And so his mother and father, they were always concerned. Krishna is always going somewhere else and stealing butter. So what they did is they had 900,000 cows, Nanda Maharaj. So they took, out of the 900,000 cows they had, they took the best 1,000 cows and milked them and then fed the milk to the best 100 cows. And then from the best 100 cows they milked that and Fell the fed that to the best ten cows, and from the best ten cows they milked them and fed that to one cow, and that cow was exclusively for Krishna, and that would be called Parma Ganda. Ganda means you know fragrant, so it was the not only was it tasty, but it was so fragrant and sweet. But still, even though Krishna had such nice milk products, he'd still go and steal butter anyway. <laughs> So one lady, she was living in Vrindavan, her name was Padmavati. So she said, uh, oh my God, she said, every time Krishna comes into my house and he steals butter, I can't catch him. I know it's him, but I can't catch him. <laughs> so I'm gonna go complain to Mother Yasoda. So she goes to Mother Yasoda and says, Mataji, you know, your son, he keeps coming into my house and stealing my butter. And you know, I want you to do something, punish him. But she said, no, that's not true. We got nice butter, he doesn't go there. It's not possible. No, he's stealing my butter. No, no, I don't believe you. <laughs> so then, okay. So she decided, well, I'll have to catch him. And I, he comes in this window over here, and so I'm going to put bells on the window. So when he opens the window, I'll hear the bells, and then I'll catch him. But then that's not good enough, because, uh, you know, he might get through. So I'll put bells on the butter pot. And she took the butter pot and hung it really high in the rafters and put bells all over it. So everything was set. Now Krishna, he can't resist good butter, you know. So he was going, and he was walking along. He was, Krishna was about three at the time, three years old. So he, his friend, uh, Madhu Mangal, you know Madhu? He likes ladus. He says, give me a ladu and I'll give you a nice sound. And he takes his hand and he goes, choo, choo, and makes that funny thing. <laughs> You can never do that when you're a kid, you know, and then your mother would say, stop that. <laughs> well, he would make these funny noises, and then he'd say, give me a ladu. <laughs> so, he was good friends with Krishna. So Krishna said, come on, this is a nice place for butter. It's got real good butter here. Madhu said, there's bells on the window. Yeah. Krishna said, don't worry. Bells don't ring. He ordered the bells not to ring. So he opened the windows, the bells were completely quiet. Snuck inside. It's a little dark inside, so he's walking around. Now Krishna has his own, he doesn't need his cell phone with the light on it. He, he has his own effulgence, so he can see anything. So he's walking around with Mother, and they're looking around. They finally get to the room of the butter, and then... <laughs> Krishna says, there it is, it's up there. Yeah, but look, there's bells on the pot. Krishna said, don't worry, bells are my servants. So he stands on the chair, and then he reaches high up, grabs the potter pot, sticks his hand in it. Soon as he does that, guess who comes? 
Dadi Loba. You know Dadi Loba? He's the monkey. Krishna's favorite monkey. And so he comes, and he comes with all his monkey friends, and Krishna starts feeding the monkeys. You know, there's a reason why Krishna stole butter, that pastime, on Diwali. You know, Diwali is the day when Lord Ramachandra arrived back in Ayodhya after defeating Ravana. So that day, there are so many what we celebrations in the different houses. So, why is it celebrated on that day when Krishna stole butter? Because Krishna wanted to reciprocate the love that the monkeys gave him in helping him defeat Lord Ramachandra. So that's why it's on Diwali Day. Okay, so you know that one. Remember that. That's important. So now, Krishna is giving butter to the monkeys, and the monkeys are eating it, and then Madhu comes, and he gives him butter. Then Krishna thinks, all right, I'm going to eat some butter. So he starts eating the butter, and guess what happens? ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling all the bells start ringing, all the bells. Krishna says, oh no, we're in trouble, let's go. So they get out of there, and they jumps up the chair, runs out the window, they ask him, Madhu says, what happened? I thought you said the bells were not going to ring. Krishna says, I don't know. I'm going to call the demigod of bells. So he calls his demigod of bells, and this big demigod comes. He's got all bells over him, and he starts paying his obeisance. He says, my dear Lord, you called me? He said, yes, I told you not to ring. He said, yes, but you also have said that when every time you take prasadam, we're supposed to ring. So we were just following your original instruction. <laughs> so Krishna couldn't say something. So then Padmavati came out and she grabs Krishna. She said, I got you. Now I'm going to take you to Mother Yasoda and she's going to punish you, you rascal. And then she's thinking, but I have to walk past Nanda Maharaj. And Nanda Maharaj, he's so lenient. He never chastises Krishna. So if I walk past him, then I won't get to Mother Yasoda. So I'm gonna, she takes her sari and she tucks it over Krishna's head and she's got her hand carrying a Krishna like that with the sari over and she's walking. She passes Nanda, goes into the house and says, Mataji, I caught your son, here he is. And she lifts up her sari and guess what? Mother Lesota looks and she says, that's not my son, that's your son. <laughs> and she looks, it was her own son. And she's, oh, she didn't know what to say. Mother, she sort of said, you must be, you know, churning too much butter. <laughs> You're working too hard, so take some rest. And she's walking outside and she leaves and she's confused. And Krishna runs up to her and he says, next time you do that, I'm going to become your husband. <laughs> <laughs> so, he, Krishna always wins. So, if you want to, if you really want to be successful in life, make Krishna your number one object of devotion, because you'll never fail in anything. Krishna consciousness is the successful process. How many of you here, here played hide and seek when you were a kid? How many of you are still playing it? <laughs> okay, it's a really a great game. Every game that every kid in the world played, Krishna played it first. I mean, the good games, not the ones, some of them, some of them are not so nice. <laughs> he didn't play, you know, these, uh, what they call it, those machines, he didn't, <laughs> those games he didn't play. But uh, so Krishna's there, Radharani's there, and uh, the gopis are there, some of the gopis. So they're playing hide and seek. So Radharani has to find everyone. So everyone hides, Krishna hides, all the gopis hide, and Radharani, she's hiding her eyes. And then it's time for hers to come out and look for everybody. So she's looking around this way and that way. And every time she gets near to the gopis, they start laughing. <laughs> 
because they love Radharani so much that every time she comes, they start laughing. Ah, I caught you. Ha ah, ha ha. You got caught. So everybody's getting a caught except one person. Guess who that is? Krishna. She can't catch him. Every time she gets close, he changes positions. <laughs> And so he goes farther away, and she said, I gotta catch that rascal. I, don't wanna go. I know he's around here somewhere. Ah, oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sing. So she starts singing. Guess what she starts singing? Hare Krishna. The Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. She's singing so sweetly with so much love, and all of a sudden Krishna freezes. He can't move, he's stuck. <laughs> It's like he's like it's stuck in love and it can't move. You know? So then Radharani comes and finds him. She says, "I caught you, you rascal." <laughs> he said, "No, you cheated." <laughs> she said, "No, you're just a bad loser." <laughs> so here's how you catch Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Ram. So we're chanting Hare Krishna, a lot of us, and most of us, or many of us, and we chant every day. But sometimes we feel like, well, it's, chanting is not so sweet, is it? It's supposed to be sweet. Susukam kartam avyayam. It's supposed to be the very sweetest of all sweetness. It's so sweet that it makes honey look sour. <laughs> it's really sweet, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. But are we getting that sweetness? If, if not, why? There's an ingredient you need. It's just like if you make sweet rice and then you get all the nice milk and you get the rice and you get the kitchen, and your perfect pots and the onion, you work so hard and you make nice sweet rice and you give it to the devotees, the devotees say, what is this? Oh, I forgot to put the sugar in. <laughs> so everything looks nice, but there's no sugar. So the sweetness comes when we cry for Krishna. This is the formula. You have to want Krishna more than anything, and then you can get Krishna. That's the formula. So that crying for Krishna, or that begging for Krishna's mercy, brings about something wonderful in your life. What happens? Something changes. That sincere desire to want that sweet taste of Krishna's association in the form of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra comes when we beg the Lord, my dear Lord, I'm so fallen, I have no good qualities, you are so merciful, yet you are so difficult to associate with. I f feel that without your association, how will I ever go on in this practice of Krishna consciousness? It's so difficult. So we have to learn how to beg Krishna for his mercy. And by doing that, even what happens, as soon as you sincerely beg the Lord for his mercy, something happens automatically, it's immediate. What is that? All the negativity that you are feeling about your devotional life it goes away. And then gradually, gradually, as you chant the holy names of the Lord, and in your heart sincerely pray to the Lord, then... Gradually, Krishna says, oh, they really want me, okay. Because, you know, a lot of people want Krishna because they can get what, what they can get from Krishna. Krishna's got everything, you know. He's, he controls everything, he owns everything, he's got everything. So people think, oh, yeah, I'll worship God because I can get, you know, I can get a good job, get a nice wife. Nice husband, what else can I get? Is there such thing as a nice husband? Not sure, but anyway, sometimes that's theoretical. <laughs> anyway, don't worry guys, you guys are still in there. Keep, keep trying. <laughs> what else is there? Uh, what else do we want in life? Oh, 
money. Money is the honey. Yes. Without money, there's no honey. And if you have a honey and you don't have any money, she's not no your she's no longer your honey anymore. She's someone else's honey. <laughs> so without money, there's no honey. <laughs> So people want money, they want nice relationships, and I want my kids to get straight A's in school. And the kid, he just, all the time he goes to school, he sets fire to the teacher's dress, you know, so he's not a good kid. But. So we have problems, you know, we always want the best in life. And we think, let me pray to God. Let God, he can give, he can do anything. There was one man, he said, I'm going to make a deal with God. I'm going to ask God, I'm going to start a business. And I want God to give me one million euros for, for profit in my business. And if he does, I'll give him 500,000. I'll give him half. I'll give him a big donation. Pretty good, huh? So he's praying to God and then he starts his business. He works hard and after the first year he gets 500,000 euros. And he doesn't give anything to God. And his friend said, you promised to give God half. He said, he already took his half. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is today's, uh, you know, prayers, my dear Lord. <laughs> what is that song? Jaya Jagadish Hare, please give me, give me Dehi, give me fame, give me money, give me happiness, give me, give me, give me. But if you get Krishna, you get everything, one thing. All you need is Krishna. That's all. So how to get Krishna? You can't really do anything that will make Krishna obliged to come. What you can do is love Krishna, that's all. You have to show your love for Krishna. Just like we love things in this world, we love our friends, we love our family members, we love our computer, we love our green socks, we love so many things, you know. We love our, com you know, our, what else do we love? Uh, we love ourselves. We look in the mirror and think, ah, oh, so nice. <laughs> so we love so many things in this world. But to love Krishna means to have, to be successful in life. And Krishna, it says, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sarugavu Nai Sravanadi Siddhi Chitte Kodiye Udoi. In your heart, love for God is there. You have to find it in the closest place in your heart. It's right there. You can't find it outside, you can't find it anywhere else, it's right in your heart. But then the heart has to be like soft. If the heart is hard, it doesn't work. <laughs> well, I'm tough, man. Nobody can tell me what to do. Krishna says, I'm not going to talk to that guy. <laughs> So the heart has to be so, just like butter. If you, if you have a nice piece of bread and the butter's been in the refrigerator in the ice box and you take it and you try to spread it on your bread, what happens? The bread breaks. So that's like cold, hard butter. It doesn't melt. But if the butter, if, if it's soft and then you can spread it on the bread and it's really nice, or you can even, as we said, you can... Just eat it. <laughs> so you have to make the heart soft like butter. That way Krishna likes to steal butter. And he'll steal your heart. So that softness comes when we actually sincerely pray to Krishna. My dear Lord, you know, I have no taste for chanting the holy names. I have no taste for reading Prabhupada's books. Jai Shisi Panchatadva Ki Jai. Our taste is gone. So that taste comes when we actually beg Krishna by showing our love for Krishna, praying to Krishna within that mood. And there's so many wonderful prayers that we can offer to Krishna to somehow or other 
awaken that natural love for Krishna. But we have to, before we can do that, we have to be, we have to understand, I have no love for Krishna. It's there, but I can't reach it. It's like, it's like you ever lose something and you can't find it? <laughs> You're looking all over the house, right? You're looking this way in the closet, underneath the bed, underneath the sink. You're going this way, you know, you're checking the cupboards, and your cl closets, and everywhere, and then you find, it's in your hand. Oh, I forgot to look there. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's love of God. It's right in our own heart. You don't have to go looking for it. But you have to get it out. How do we get it out? Is just pray to Krishna. My dear Lord, I'm chanting your holy names, but I have no taste. Please give me your mercy. So Krishna sees, oh, he really wants me, she really wants me. When we really want Krishna, then you can get Krishna. When you want Krishna more than anything, the only thing, if you think, if I lose everything in this world and I get Krishna, I'm successful. And if I have everything in this world and I don't have Krishna, Shrama Evihi Kevalam, the Shastras say it's all useless. Because without Krishna, there is no life. So, therefore, we have to beg Krishna, pray, pre plead to Krishna. Prabhupada said this is called laoyam. Laoyam means intense desire to have Krishna. It's not that you walk around like, I gotta get Krishna. You have, it's not like that. You have to really, really. Every time you chant the holy names of the Lord, or every time you're doing your service, you have to do it in such a way that you think, I want Krishna to be pleased. I want to show my love for Krishna. Then the process becomes easy. When you practice that, it becomes natural. Just like a child cannot walk when it's very small, but the walking propensity is in the child. So when the child practices to walk after some time, it naturally can walk on its own. It may fall at the beginning, but then the mother picks it up and then keeps it going and then makes sure it doesn't fall and get hurt. And then after some time, the child can walk on its own. So that natural love is just we have to wake and awaken it. It's there within the heart. And when we do that, we'll find something wonderful because we actually come in contact with not only with with Krishna, but with with everything in this world, everything makes sense then, in the sense that everything is connected to Krishna, like that. So these are just some little uh, ways to get that sweet taste, because if Krishna consciousness is not sweet, it's not Krishna conscious. <laughs> it's sweet by nature, like that. It's joyful, susukam kartavavya yam, it's the highest form of spiritual happiness. It makes material happiness look like misery. <laughs> so that's, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came, panchatattva bakam krishnam bhakta rupa, sarupa kam bhakta avatar bhakta kyam namami bhakta shakti kam, five Personalities who represent the absolute truth all in one have come to show us how to get that taste. Harinam Sankirtam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. They, as Lord Chaitanya said, the fruit of love of God is so sweet, I'm tasting that fruit and there are so many fruit here. I just want to distribute that fruit, so please take this fruit and enjoy it to your full satisfaction. And if you like it so much, and give it to others, and they will also have become happy also. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is like a he's like a store merchant who owns a big, big warehouse full of sweet, juicy fruit. And he wants to distribute it in the form of Hare Nam Sankirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Ram, Ram, Hare Hare. Okay, so I can't see the clock. What time is it?
Oh, there's one. Okay. It's still 25 minutes to 5, so we got some more time. But let me see if there's any questions about Krishna consciousness. If not, I'll speak some more. Any questions so far? Yes. What does it mean? It means it means perfection in life. It means everything you were aspiring for for millions of lifetimes comes in one one principle. The association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Krishna is the beginning, he's the middle, he's the end, he's the source of everything, he's within everything, he controls everything. Everything is him, everything is everything in existence that anybody ever would want completely and perfectly is found in Krishna. Just like you know, someone says, well, what is it like to be warm? Well, you, how can you explain warmthness to a person who doesn't know what warmthness is? Well, you say, all right, get close to the fire and let me know how you feel. So the closer you get to the fire, the more you get the heat and the more you see the light closer you get to Krishna and then all of your life changes completely. You become, first you become peaceful, then you become happy, then you become joyful, then you become blissful, then you become mad, then you could become completely mad and completely crazy and that nobody can talk to you. <laughs> and you don't care anyway. <laughs> so, these are the different uh, steps that you experience. It's, it's like that. It's just higher and higher forms. Anandam buddhi vardhanam, Lord Chaitanya says. It's an ocean of unlimited happiness. Radharani looks at Krishna and she sees, oh, Krishna looks so beautiful. And she becomes happy. When she sees Krishna looking so beautiful, she becomes more beautiful. And Krishna looks at Radharani and sees that she's become more happy, he be therefore I mean, more beautiful, therefore he becomes more happy and he becomes more beautiful. And she sees Krishna and then she becomes more happy and she becomes more beautiful. And Krishna looks at her and sees that she's become more happy, and then he becomes more beautiful. So this continues. Don't try it with your wife, it doesn't work all the time. You, you might get it through a few of them, but uh, it's not complete. But this is spiritual life. Spiritual life doesn't have, an, have a limit. It's unlimited. Everything in this world is limited. So happiness is unlimited. Knowledge is unlimited. Everything that is desirable is unlimited. So we taste all these things in a limited form. But the association of Krishna makes our life unlimitedly happy. Unlimitedly, what we say, full of knowledge. One who's Krishna consciousness doesn't want anything else because they are, they are, they understood. I I found everything. There's nothing else they even consider. And so, so Krishna consciousness is your natural consciousness. It's not something you have to bring from the outside. It's there, within the soul. And we get taste sometimes. We get a little taste. Right? Sometimes we become very happy and. And then it goes, and it's gone. But there is a stage of, of bhakti where the happiness becomes steady, and then it only increases. We want to get to that stage. And that's called the stage of ruchi. And then when ruchi comes, ruchi means sweetness. And then there's sweetness, and then it goes higher and higher and higher. And there's various symptoms. The symptom is one cannot stop thinking of Krishna. One cannot stop thinking of how to serve Krishna. Like that. Now, these are symptoms of higher stages of consciousness. Krishna becomes everything. And for, the, for, for Krishna, that devotee becomes everything. That devotee knows no one but Krishna, and Krishna knows no one but the devotee. That devotee feels that I have Krishna, and I alone have Krishna. The love is so exclusive that it feels like there's nothing, that Krishna has no other lover except me. <laughs> That's how perfect that love is. <laughs> Although Krishna's can love everyone. <laughs> like that. So, and it's explained in, the, in Chaitanya Charitamrita some of the symptoms of love of God. 
And these symptoms are, you know, the different forms of what we say, ecstasy, like that. So if we chant the holy names with humility and with, with eagerness to uh, please Krishna through chanting the holy names, to become, what we say, fixed in devotion to Krishna, and gradually we start awaking these natural principles that are in our heart. It's real. These are things are real. Uh, it's all nicely explained in Chaitanya Charitamrita and also in Nectar Devotion, the different symptoms. It's a science. It's a science of awakening love. <laughs> love is a great science. <laughs> the science of bhakti. That comes at a certain stage. That's part of the process. That one, at one point, one actually can see Krishna face to face. Just like I'm seeing you and you're seeing me, you can also mm -hmm. see Krishna in the same way. But that's a higher stage of bhakti. And that's one of the stages of love of God. It's explained love of God has nine stages. And one of the stages is uh, seeing Krishna face to face. That's a high stage. But that's possible because Krishna is right here, present, within the energy. He can appear anywhere. Just like sometimes if someone is in trouble and they call out for Krishna, Krishna saves them immediately because he's right, he's not here. He doesn't have to get on Garuda and fly a long way and make sure he's on the right route. He's there. He's there instant because he's, per he's, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. Everywhere, at all times, in all places. But he's unmanifested. So we can only feel him, we can't actually see him. But there is a level of bhakti where Krishna reveals himself. It's just like, it's understood, the closer you get to the fire, the more you get the heat and the more you get the light. So the closer you get to Krishna, the more you feel the presence of Krishna. And then when you get, get really close, then Krishna appears to that devotee. And he wants to be with us more and more than we want to be with with him. That's the amazing part. He loves us so much that he wants to give himself, but he's not easily. He doesn't easily give himself. He wants he wants your love exclusively. That's just the way he is. <laughs> he's greedy for love. <laughs> He does what you can share it. <laughs> you, we love, we can love everyone in this world and everything in this world when we actually have love for Krishna. Otherwise, we may have some feelings of attraction and affection for others, but it's not complete until it actually finds its way in our relationship with Krishna. Then we see everyone as part of Krishna. Everyone is part of Krishna. Or everyone has love for Krishna. And everyone is dear to Krishna, even the non-devotees, <laughs> everyone. That's Krishna. Any other comments, questions? Thank you. Was that, was that okay? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, question, yes, yes. Uh, Mohanisi, Mohini, Mohanasani Radha. Okay. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Um, what about if we. Um, uh, what about if we dream about Krishna? Is that also considered to some kind of this rasa? Can be. It depends what the dream is. <laughs> the thing is, Krishna doesn't act differently in your dreams than he explains what he is through Shastra and through Guru. If you have 
you know, dreams that Krishna's, you know, chasing after you, that's not a real dream, that's a ghost. <laughs> so in other words, Krishna, the actual Krishna, as we know through Shastra, and what appears to us in dream, have to coincide. Because there are entities who can take forms and enter into our dreams to appear like somebody who we are not, they are not. So people can, and there, there are entities that can take the form of Krishna and appear in a dream. But they won't act like Krishna, they'll do something else. So how do you know? You have to really know a little bit about Krishna, how he does things, before you can actually say that's a real dream of Krishna. There was one, I had one disciple, and she kept saying, oh, I'm dreaming about Prabhupada. And Prabhupada is with me, and I'm putting my head on Prabhupada's lap, and he's, he's stroking my head so nicely. I said, that's not Prabhupada. <laughs> Prabhupada doesn't do that. She said, oh, yes, that's Prabhupada. She argued with me, and I said, not Prabhupada. <laughs> So later on, she had another dream where that same Prabhupada was smashing windows and running after her to, to, to kill her. And she said, you're right, it wasn't Prabhupada. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes people have images of, you know, of the Lord or the Lord's devotees in dreams, but they have to be in the same way that we know them through scriptures or through experience. It's... Because dreams can be little, when we say unclear, there's a lot of things. A dream is made up of different, a lot of different elements sometimes. But, and Prabhupada said, if Krishna actually appears in his dream, then that's, then that's also. He can appear anywhere. He could appear in any place and, and to anyone at any time. Mm -hmm. Anything else? So, and another thing, just, just to add to the... One of the means for getting the taste of chanting is to pray before you chant and while you're chanting, but mostly before you chant. Pray to Lord Chaitanya, pray to Srila Haridas Thakur especially, and pray to your spiritual master and pray to Srila Prabhupada to help you chant the holy names. And there are authorized prayers that you can offer. There are, I know devotees who spend like sometimes a half hour offering prayers before they begin their japa. Um, uh, I use a few prayers. There's a beautiful prayer that I use every day to chant, to pray to Haridas Thakur. So it's a short prayer. Now, I'll teach it to you. It's easy. O Vaishnava Thakur, alone I have no hope to chant the holy names of Lord Hari. Therefore, please be merciful unto me, and with a particle of faith, Give me the treasure of the holy name of Lord Shri Krishna. That's a sweet prayer. So you're praying, I don't have any taste, but you have the taste, and you are merciful. Therefore, I know by your mercy, I can also receive that taste. That's a nice prayer. So we can also offer prayers like that. Is there another question over there somewhere? No? Okay, so we're getting closer to five o'clock. So if there's no more questions, I'll stop here. And everyone chant nicely, chant enthusiastically, and chant as much as you can. Prabhupada said 16 rounds. That's just to make sure you get going. <laughs> so he said, why 16 rounds? 16,000 rounds. So our whole process, really, is basically two things. Chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, associate with and serve Vaishnavas. These are the two things that make Krishna consciousness wonderful. 
And we can add a third thing, read and study Srimad Bhagavatam. And if you do these three things regularly, you will never have any problems in Krishna consciousness. And you'll always taste that the sweetness of Krishna consciousness. Of course, we have other services we do, and then we should do that. But the scriptures talk a lot and emphasize the importance of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. This is the essence. Satang satam prasangam mamavirya sambido bhavanti rit karna rasayana kata. Rasayana means sweet. What is that sweet? That sweet kata that goes to the ear, goes to the heart, and brings about the happiness that we're looking for in devotional service. So we find that devotees don't really read or hear Krishna's pastimes enough. So we want to add that. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati gives a nice point. He says, to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is nice, but we have to hear and chant hit the glories of Krishna's activities. He says, the holy name is like Krishna, and Krishna's pastimes is like Radharani. So Radha and Krishna together means to add to our life not only the holy name, but hear and chant the wonderful glories of it. And there's so many pastimes of the Lord that we can absorb ourselves in. I'll tell you one more pastime. Could you want you want to hear one more? Do you like cowherd boy pastimes? Cowherd boy said, Hey Krishna, how do you kill all those demons? You're just like us. Yesterday I beat you up and I played I played wrestling with you and you were crying. But still you killed those big demons. How do you do that? So Krishna didn't say anything. He was quiet. So the boy said, I know, it's his mother. She gives him these special amulets on his legs and arms, and he has mantras, and he uses these mantras to kill the demons. Another boy says, no, that's not it. So they're all guessing he has a special demon-killing mantra. So after some time, they're all, they say, okay, Krishna, how do you do it? And he said, do you really want to know? Yeah, tell us. Okay. Well, after I was born, there was this great sage who came to see my father. His name was Gargarishi, and he had a special private meeting with my father, and he told my father, Nanda Maharaj, he said, your son, you know, he's very special. He's almost as good as Narayan. In fact, he is Narayan. <laughs> and so if you want to know how I do get, kill it, demons, I'm God. Ha ha ha! He's God! <laughs> They're all laughing. He's God! Ha <laughs> ha! They all laugh! <laughs> laughing and laughing and laughing. And then they said, all right, let's go play. <laughs> you know, they don't care whether he's God or not. He's just so nice. <laughs> so even if he tells them he's God, they don't, <laughs> doesn't make it. That, pl that pastime happened in a place called Hastyavan. Vani means place and Hastya means laughter. So if you hear that pastime in that place, you'll laugh. Not only will you laugh, you won't be able to stop. <laughs> it's such a nice pastime. You just keep laughing and laughing. Because the cowherd boys, they just kept laughing at Krishna. Krishna was laughing at himself. <laughs> they were all laughing. It was just laughing. And then they said, all right, let's play. <laughs> So yeah, Krishna's pastimes are what we say sweet, <laughs> very sweet. Okay, so we'll stop there. Uh, I'm sure there's other things that are sweet. It's called Sadiva Avidja Jalja Tendriyata Hekaha Jive Pele Visaya Sagare Dharma Jeje Bayati Lobam Hoyasa Dharmati. 
यथेचिता कोटी न संसार कृष्णा बोरा दोया मोय कोरी बारा जीवा जो स्वापर्षार न दीलो बाद सेनाम रीतपा ओ राधा कृष्णा गुनगा ओ प्रेमिरा को चैतन्य नीता जाइनी माय जाइनी था हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे श्री कृष्ण प्रसाद अब की थैंक यू हरे कृष्णा चंद्रमाली प्रभु चंद्रमाली स्वामी की जा थैंक यू महाराज फॉर वांडरफुल लेक्चर तो ये रिमाइंड्स व्हाट टेस्ट फॉर कृष्णा रियली मींस